New York Times hails our next guest as the best thriller writer of the moment. And he's out with his brand new book. Lee Child joins us live here on Get Connected. Welcome. Yeah, it's my pleasure to be here. How are you doing? Well, Lee, I'm doing great. But one thing we know for sure is Jack, your hero in the book, doesn't let you sleep, does he? <laughs> it keeps on going. It's like the Energizer Bunny. Book 16 just out. Well, I know you've done over a dozen books with him as the lead character. So when does he pop into your head and go, oh, it's time to write another story about me? You know, every September is when that happens. I take uh, the summer off, I take a vacation, and then it starts, it's a bit like a sneeze, you know, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen, it's gonna happen. Then it hits September 1st and bang, there it goes. I, I start off with a new story. I often don't know where it's gonna go, but I just sort of start at the beginning and follow it and see what happens. Lee, this is the 16th time you've written about Jack, but what was it now about this book that you said, hey, where did he come from? Well, because simply for that exact question, you know, we've followed him in, in current day stories for this long, 15 years now, and people have loved that, but they've also had a question in their minds, which is, okay, this is who he is now. How did he become this way? What made him leave the army and become this kind of drifter? And so I had to write the story, sooner or later I had to do it, where it's his last case in uniform, what was it about that case that shook him loose from the army and turned him into the guy that we know now? Now, don't you think the a title will be too revealing? I think that it's a multi-level title. I mean, the affair, you know, there's, there's a historic affair some woman with, has with, with a mysterious politician. There is the affair generally means that, you know, the business, the mystery or whatever. But there is a pretty steamy affair in it because also... I like to shake up the series a little bit, and Reacher is a very tough guy. He's quite silent, he's quite macho, very masculine. But he has a tender side too, and I thought it was about time to show that. And let's see him, let's see him with some romantic action going on. And so this one is e easily <laughs> the most romantic book I've written. Um, and it's a nice balance, I think, you know, this seriously tough guy. And as a matter of fact, the woman with which he has this romantic action is a seriously tough woman as well. But they get together and it's, a, you know, some pretty nice episodes. All right, Lee, what was it like for you taking that angle on the romantic scenes and bringing them to life? It's, you know, the trade secret is that it is, that's the most difficult thing to write of all. You know, you can write anything else. You can write fights, you can write action, you can write anything else, but the romantic scenes are always very difficult. And so I was nervous doing it, but actually I think they came out pretty good. And um, I'm not gonna shy away from them. I'm not, I'm not uh, don't regret it. I think they came out okay. So for you, what success formula have you used to develop the plot that you're going to build the book around? Well, the main thing, you know, last September, looking back on it, I knew that it was going to be a prequel, and it was, what was it, last year, 2010? And so this book was set in 1997, so it was quite a long way in the past. So it was really about thinking yourself, A, into the world of 1997, which, if you think about it, was very different from, from the world of today and also thinking the character from being a developing, aging character into being a younger guy again. So it was quite a mental exercise and a lot of fun. It was, um, writing is always like taking a mental vacation because you're somewhere else with different people. But this was like a double vacation because it was not only made up, but it was also made up with a younger man in the past. Well, Lee, I've got to ask you, there's very few authors that can say this, but what is it like to have over 50 million of your books in print? You know, the only safe thing for me to do about that is people say, how many books have you sold? And I say, I've sold 16, uh, one a year to my publisher. And it's the publisher who sells the copies. Uh, and it's their credit that so many have sold. They do a fantastic job. The distribution, the marketing, the promotion, all that kind of stuff, that's what creates the sales. All I can claim is I sell one book a year, which is the manuscript to them. And if I really started to think about all those people, it would be paralyzing, I think. So I just do what I've always done, which is I tell myself the story. And as long as I like it, then evidently other people like it too. Lee, given all your success yet again with this book, The Affair, given that success, what advice would you give to any of us living out our dreams? I would say just follow it, just follow it. Listen to yourself, don't listen to anybody else because if you start listening to advice, you're gonna get a lot of conflicting opinions and you can't do anything by committee. You just gotta to listen to yourself and do it. Well, one thing's for sure, Lee, we are so glad you do it and do it so well. Thanks again for joining us. Yeah, my pleasure.
Well, there's definitely a reason why this book is warm and toasty, because you get all romantic inside. So you're going to have to check out how he writes about romance in The Affair. We'll be right back on Get Connected. Thank you so much for watching. Are you tired of negative news? We are. And that's why we're creating a movement. By keeping it real. With what you need to know. It's more than what's happening. It's bringing hope back to our lives. So go to contv.com and join our movement.